Well, today I'm talking with William Burroughs about this enjoyable book, The Asteroid Threat. Uh, I guess I would characterize it as uh, the story of how astronomers, planetary scientists, space engineers might someday save the world. And, uh, well, how would you characterize your book? <laughs> I think you did it very well. Uh, I would characterize it by saying that my point is that we are not, we don't have to be the hapless, helpless victims uh, of nature. Uh, my friends in NASA and elsewhere in the space community like to say that if the dinosaurs had had a space program, they'd still be here. We have got the wherewithal uh, to save ourselves. Uh, and the book, the most important point of the book is that it explains that uh, and comes out with a plan. And the plan uh, was not invented by me. Uh, it is pretty universally accepted within the community. So, it's my impression, at least, you're advocating us spending quite a lot more on, on this problem on planetary defense. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, the Cold War is over. Peace, alas, has broken out. Uh, and what I like to tell people who say it will cost an astronomical amount of money, pardon the pun, uh, to do this, uh, I say, what is your collective life as a civilization worth? Um, the dinosaurs got blown away. Uh, it can happen again. Uh, the chances are it's not going to happen uh, very soon, but doomsday is always a possibility. So what I'm saying is protect yourself. That is a very good use of money. Yeah. So what are you advocating that people should do? Say if you had a few billion dollars or if you were king of the world, what do you think of the right thing to do? Well, I would set up a permanent uh, planetary defense uh, uh, system. Uh, and uh, again, uh, within the community, uh, this is acknowledged as having three parts. Part one is you've got to have the sensors on the planet, infrared sensors, on the planet and off the planet uh, to spot any so-called earth crosser, any potential impactor that is coming this way and it looks like it's going to hit. Part two is um, you've got to be able, with 20 or more years notice, you've got to be able to send a spacecraft out that will nudge it off course long before it gets here. And given the distance, nudge it off nudging it off course by just a tiny amount will do it. It will pass far wide of the planet. The third uh, part of the strategy is last ditch, uh, and that is being able to stop it violently, uh, probably with a nuke, uh, if everything else fails and it looks like there's going to be an impact. So there have been a lot of efforts to, to find these things. Uh, Congress passed the bill. They put up some money. There, uh, you know, the, the, there are these programs you talk about, notably um, the Linear Program and, and Catalina Observatory, PanStars like that. I suppose there's another one that will come online in a few years, this uh, LSST, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. Are those going to do the deal in terms of finding the asteroids, or, or, or do we need to build more? Well, they should uh, pretty well do it, but uh, there's also, as I mentioned in the book, Sentinel, uh, which is an infrared telescope they're planning uh, on putting in 2017 they're planning on putting into a Venus-like orbit from where it will watch the neighborhood, as I call it, uh, and pick up anything, again, uh, that looks threatening. You can't have too many eyes, uh, and the community is in agreement on that. So, yes, everything you mention uh, is in play, and Sentinel should be in play, too. So, Sentinel's funded. It's going concern. It, it'll be up there in 2017, as far as we know. That is the plan. Uh, it is being funded uh, by uh, a company in Colorado, Ball Aerospace and Technologies Corp, uh, and uh, the B612 Foundation, which is astronauts, former astronauts Rusty Schweikert and Ed Liu started uh, with some other people. Uh, they are actually going to build it, uh, and then it will get put into space, as I say, I think, in 2017. That's the plan. So it's it's it's... The, the, the private sector. So the money we don't have and that we do need to protect the planet then is for 
a spacecraft that would go out and actually meet the beast, right? Exactly. Uh, and uh, um, there's no plan to build those things right now. Is that correct? Well, uh, it, it's being it's being thought about, uh, but is it concrete? No. Yeah. Uh, it is it is all theory. And what sort of order of magnitude amount would those cost? You think? I, as far as I know, that has not been determined, uh, but it's obviously multiple billions. But again, um, what's your life worth? Yeah, right. So, how probable is it? What what chance do people listening to this have of getting killed by an asteroid by whatever else would come along? And well, how does that compare to whatever else would come along? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, the chances of getting knocked off by an asteroid are very, very, very slim. Uh, there is an inverse law here, and that is Earth gets pelted all the time, as you know, uh, by everything from pebbles uh, to boulders to larger rocks and so on. We're constantly uh, being um, hit by NEOs, so-called near-Earth objects. Uh, the chances of the big one uh, coming along, uh, which would be a planet killer, are very remote. Uh, they think that the next time will be in about 100 years. And by that time, we should be prepared to do something about it. But as I say, it is the smaller ones that will ruin your day. Uh, it, they can take out uh, large tracts of, of area. Uh, and uh, it, it has happened, uh, judging by the number of impact craters on this planet, it's happened well over 130 times. Yeah. And of course, this is a random process, so it could be happening in the next minute, and, and we wouldn't know necessarily. That's right. Um, so I read in the book that getting killed by an asteroid is a little bit less probable than dying in an airplane crash. Is that a fair statement? That is absolutely right. Yeah. As I say, it's, a, it, it's, it's the inverse law. Uh, the chances are very remote, but if it happens, uh, it can be devastating. So I would guess that one result of this program so far, finding all these asteroids, we found a lot of asteroids with these monitoring programs that we actually now know that of a lot of asteroids that are not going to hit us, and we haven't found any that will. So we probably knocked that probability down just uh, some, right? I mean, it's a, we're a little, we know we're a little safer than we knew before. Is that a fair statement? I think we're a lot safer. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's another element to this, and that is um, the little prince uh, who loved the asteroid he lived on uh, had a point. Asteroids are not all bad. Uh, asteroids uh, have got uh, some potentially very, very useful uh, qualities. One is uh, a lot of them are loaded with precious metals that can be mined. Another is uh, very big ones can be lived on, uh, and that's in preparation for a lunar colony, which is in the book, uh, lunar colony being something I believe very strongly in. Uh, so the point is asteroids are a mixed bag. Uh, getting in close, turning into meteors, uh, they can do terrible damage. Uh, as happened last year uh, in